as a user of Maxwell, there are a great many wonderful web resources that you're going to want to be able to take advantage of. And the first among these would be the Maxwell Render Resources page. It's just resources.maxwellrender.com. As you can see, we have MXM materials that we can choose, which we already have loaded on the screen. There we go. And you can see that we have many, many materials, 3,825 materials, which is not necessarily true because many of these are actual libraries where there might be hundreds of materials in each library. So there could very easily be well over five or 6,000 materials in here at this point. Also, you can download ready-made skies that other users have created that th they thought were interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of those. We can also download some free HDR images. Now, as with anything, you get what you pay for and free is free. So that tells you something about the general quality level. And that's not true of everything. I mean, sometimes you'll get some really good stuff for free. But generally speaking, you get what you pay for. And that's true with this stuff as well. So bear that in mind when you're thinking about HDR images, don't judge the efficiency of image-based lighting off of these particular maps because these may not be the highest quality maps available to you. There's a lot of very high quality ones that you can purchase online. Also worth noting is these MXM materials that we'll be looking at were made by users just like you and I. And because of that, there is some issue as to whether or not they are going to be of the highest quality. Some are of very, very outstandingly high quality, and others are okay, and then there's some in there that are just real duds. Combine that with the fact that the render engine in 2.1, which is what we'll be using for this particular training video series, is not at all the same as what was used in one point whatever. And some of the materials are fine that way, but some other materials are not, like SSS materials. If you download a material that contains an SSS component out of the material library and it's from version one point whatever, you're going to have a lot of problems and it may not even render at all as anything that would resemble what it is that you think you're going to be getting. So bear that in mind that there are some duds and the further you go back in history, and you can see here that it's organized by chronological date. The further you go back in history, the more likely it is that you're going to get a dud. So I love the gallery. That's what it used to be called. I, I really love the MXM material gallery here. I actually have some things in the material gallery. Let me show them to you. So here's a couple frames that I made. And you can see here that that's a render of the symbol. Now, the symbol is a very important little thing that comes free with Maxwell, and what it is, is it's sort of a standardized scene. And if you go to your Maxwell install folder, you'll see there's a folder named library. And in the library, you'll see scenes. And if you go to scenes, there's the symbol right there. All the files that are needed, as well as instructions for how to use it, what it's all about, and why you would want to use it. So the symbol is a standardized material scene that's used for anything that's going to be uploaded to the gallery. And you're going to need to take your material, whatever your material is, and render it on a symbol in order to upload your materials to the gallery because they won't take it without that. I also did a little test render here of it on an actual picture frame because that's what it is, it's a picture frame material. And if you click on the thumbnail down here, it'll come up with that. So there we go, that's my picture frame material. And yeah, I like it, it's pretty cool. It's based off of a real picture frame I have hanging on my wall. You know, you can join, and once you've registered, you can sign in. And for that matter, I'll just go ahead and log in up here. So I'll just put in my information. Big surprise. There we go. And there we go. We're in. So now I have the ability to add this to my favorites. I have the ability to vote. And we only have the ability to vote up. We don't have the ability to vote down. But whenever you vote, it gets points. 
And right now this person has two points. And you can also choose to download this. Now you won't be able to download these. Sorry about that. You won't be able to download these until you've signed on for this particular material gallery for any of these, whether it be the HDRIs or the skies, you won't be able to do that. Now, the same is true if you want to upload something. You click on this little upload link. You won't be able to do that until you've signed up. But once you've done that, you'll find that this is a good resource and it's certainly a great learning resource after you've watched these videos because you'll have a chance to look at the materials that other people have made and make decisions about why does it look the way that it looks and is that the way that I would do it, you know, I mean, not me, but you. So this is really something that's a great, great learning resource more than anything. And you can also use these materials, but I'm going to give you a couple thousand materials right out of the bat that are going to be a pretty high quality to get you started. And hopefully after watching these videos, you won't be intimidated by the material making process. We'll go ahead and continue on with our tour of web resources here in the next video.